So we look, so we're okay. Ah, look. I'm good through the camera, man. All right. You mean you don't have the real tape thing? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so can you just tell us a little bit about the founding of Exodus? What, what is the story of Exodus? Sure, so my name is Julio Medina. Um, I founded Exodus 19, close to 20 years ago. Um, Exodus began in 1999 and actually started much sooner than that. It started in prisons uh, throughout New York State. Um, I served 12 years in prison. Um, while I was in prison, I saw the goodness of, of people, of people that the rest of society said uh, needs to be locked up and deserves to be incarcerated. I got to see those same people uh, after they got their GED and their high school diplomas and after they maybe got an associates um, and they started becoming more conscious and recognized what their crime was. I got a chance to see people in that transformative stage and for me I wanted to do something about that. Um, and the best vehicle to do that with was through Exodus. Um, so when I got out, it was something I wanted to do. It was really difficult. Uh, I found a job, but the main job was trying to do this um, and create something sustainable, again, for people to walk into, come home and not be judged and not be called by a number and have their dignity and humanity restored. Um, so for me, this was uh, uh, more than kind of the creation uh, of Exodus, but it was a vision that I think uh, w was put in front of me by God. and. I tried to follow that vision throughout. Um, it was really, really difficult initially starting uh, the program. Um, no one wants to believe a quote unquote ex-con or a felon or, uh, trying to start something and help people. Um, but I think we've been able to persevere and, and 20 years later, we have you know, 42 people on staff. We have a budget of about $4 million. We have a site here in East Harlem, uh, one in Newburgh, one in Poughkeepsie and we service close to 1,500 people a year. Um, of course, the goal would be for me to one day be out of business, that we've, we, we've actually come to terms and, and decreased uh, criminal justice involvement where programs like Exodus don't need to exist. Um, but for the time being, we're here. We're here to help uh, people getting out of prison. We're here to help young people uh, who may be at that brink of, of success and or um, uh, the justice system. Um, so for us, it's, a, it's, it's, it's important that this work exists. It imp it's important that it exists where it exists, in East Harlem, uh, Newburgh and Poughkeepsie. We're in communities that are, that are where most people are returning to, and I think that's one of the, the added benefits of Exodus. Um, we're there and, and we exist for those that are coming home. So t tell us about, okay, impact. What, sure. You know, how did it come about? What was the, the thinking behind it? Okay. Um, so impact. Impact, uh, I'm going to get the acronym right first. Let's start there. So impact is immersing, immersing motivated participants in academic and career training. Impact. And basically what we want to do with impact is all funding, all, a lot of resources go to people who done a short sentence and or maybe youth to do some intervention work um, to prevent what happens in the long run. But at Exodus, we don't want to dismiss um, those people who did 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years in prison and are coming out to a new world, uh, a new world that they have to find a place to fit in, a new world that has left them uh, technology-wise that have left them so far behind that they can come out and, and basically say, wow, prison wasn't that bad. I did not have to deal with all these other things. So impact, um, again, is a space where we're looking to get you know, between eight to 12 long-termers. Um, it's a 12-week program. In those 12 weeks, we cover family, we cover substance abuse, we cover technology, we, we cover workforce, we cover not only workforce and immediate placement, but about careers. And what do we think about careers? We talk about spirituality. And what does that look like in someone's life? We take them out on different trips to experience what it's like to, to kind of re-enter the community in a different way. 
in a way that is healthy, in a way that they're now contributing members as opposed to in the past. Um, impact we during that that 12 weeks i think what we want to do is allow them to focus on their own reentry. so we try to provide all the support we can by they, they get a, a weekly stipend um they get transportation um their meals are here so they get breakfast lunch and dinner right at exodus um and again i think f f the the purpose again is to wrap services around long-termers where they can become successful. Remember the trauma of prison. Just think about living in a prison cell for 10, again, 20 years. Um, you have absolutely no outside contact or very minimal contact. And now you're released and you're told, okay, go succeed. Um, that's traumatic. Not, not, not even to talk about the conditions in which that trauma not only, not only lived but blossomed, right, in these really violent prisons. Um, so at Impact, it's an opportunity for them to stop, to breathe, to embrace everything around them, to get to understand what the family is doing, to, but not only be that father or mother or son or daughter, but participate in that process. You know, prison has taken something away. Uh, many long-termers don't, don't believe that, but it has. Uh, many of us went in very young, 17, 18. We're not sure what a real relationship is like. We don't understand what it is to pay a phone bill, a mortgage, a, a rent, any of those things. I think for us, it's being able to take a step forward and say, you know what, after this 12 weeks, there's going to be a career. You're going to be looking and you're going to have a focus, a focus that you didn't have prior to it beginning. So you went you would kind of be right on the cusp of yes. long term. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, definitely mm -hmm. but over 10 years, but it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't quite, it was not quite 20 or 30 right. like some of the yeah. folks that impact yeah. 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 So I guess from your perspective, take us back 20 years ago, mm -hmm. um, or 20 plus years ago when we were released, what would impact do? Mm. What would impact have been for you? So 20 years ago when I was released, if I would have had impact, I think it would have allowed my growth to be more sustained. It would have allowed me to gain the professionalism that I didn't have in the past. So mind you, prior to going to prison and doing prison, I never had a formal job. I worked in a different industry that was illegal and that's why I went to prison. Um, so I didn't know what it was to, you know, wake up at eight and get to work early and, and, and put on a suit every day and, and be accountable to other people on the job and work as a team. Um, I did not know what it was like. I did not know boundaries and all these other things you learn around professionalism and how to talk to one another. Um, impact for me would have probably uh, 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 elevated and escalated and educated and, and did all those things that I wasn't able to do, that I had to learn kind of on my own through mistakes. Um, thank God none of those mistakes were costly, but through mistakes that I was able to say, wow, okay, I'm not supposed to do that on the job. I didn't know that. I didn't know, uh, you, you know, you, if, if you went out, there was a certain time you had to come back. I'm like, okay, the day's done, you, you're gone. I didn't know there was a, a place where you work with a participant, but you can't work with them that close, but you still have to provide a blueprint and be supportive. I didn't know that you, know, you, you couldn't go to a movie with a participant or, or that, was a, that was a lack of professional behavior if you did those things. So I think what Impact does, it provides this platform so people who spent 20 and 30 years in prison, who went in at 17, who yes, a grown woman, a grown man, but emotionally things have stopped at 17 because contained in the prison cell there was not much growth emotionally happening there was physical growth there was these other growth happening but not the emotional part not the part that talks about relationships and how that happens not the part that talks about work in a very real way in an outside work area you know some some people may challenge me and said you know well who know i worked when i was on the inside we did work 
but we worked two hours in the morning, then we locked in for two hours and went to sleep, and then we came back out again for two hours and worked. No, this is a straight eight hour shift or a straight 10 hour shift. We did not have the opportunity to do that. And I think what impact does, it provides that. People get here on time. Um, uh, people meet with the, with the professor. They, they, people have homework. Um, they have to come back. People are held accountable. There's a cohort of people that are now looking at each other and say, wow, I depend on you. You are my brother and you are my sister. And, I, and those are the things that I did not get while I got out. There was, there was no impact for me and for so many other people. Um, the program is expensive to run. Um, that's one of the, the, the things that, that, that probably is so challenging about the program. But the success is remarkable. The success of some of the people that come through impact when we're talking about careers, when we're talking about them being great fathers, them being great parents, them being great sons, the proof is there and impact works. I am deeply grateful to Julio for this opportunity. You know, and I always remind him of this, you know, he'll come and say, oh, you know, the guys think you're doing wonderful. And I take that as a big compliment. And, uh, you know, oh, you've got these gifts, but the gifts are the seed. You know, but the seed means nothing without the soil. My pastor would say, palm trees won't grow in Alaska. Not because the seed is wrong, but because the soil is wrong. And Exodus is a soil that has really allowed me to again, get my voice back, get my confidence back, get my gifts and my awareness of my gifts back. And I'm deeply grateful to Julio for giving me the opportunity because as I've poured into others, it's built me back up. So I'm, I'm, I, I am really a part of this Exodus story of redemption and coming back swinging from defeat. Uh, my name is Aureo Ocasio, um, recently incarcerated. Um, I'm one of seven siblings. And um, for basically 33 years of my life, I have lived a self-destructive lifestyle. Um, I decided to turn my life around at the age of 42. That's when I really experienced an epiphany in my life. Um, I was speaking to my family about um, what they were doing during the holidays or for the holidays. And they were telling me about everything that they were doing, you know, working and places that they were going to and children that they were having and birthdays that they were celebrating and what they were cooking for dinner or for the holidays. And after hanging up, um, I was at Auburn Correctional Facility at the time. I, um, I was looking at the wall that's in the, in the yard and it started snowing. I was looking up and you know, over the wall and, and it started snowing. And I remember asking myself at that point in time, what, what am I doing with my life? What am I doing here? It's like, it's like if I had just woke up from whatever stupor that I was in. And um, after that, I, you know, I started participating in therapeutic programs to address the problems that I had. At one point I got depressed and I had to go see a psychiatrist about my depression and the psychiatrist told me that my problem was, was, it, was an easy one, that I had to make a choice whether I wanted to walk on a road where there was roses and, and tulips or on the road that had thorns and thistles. So I chose to turn my life around at that point and improve it from how I was living it for so many years. And she told me that the main thing about making a decision, any decision, was to remain true about it, to be true to it. She said that if I couldn't be true to myself or the decision that I made, that you know I couldn't be true to anybody else or whatever it was that um, I 
decided to do. Um, after taking all these therapeutic programs and practicing every day to live a different lifestyle and going through the revamping of my principles and, and, and values that I normally didn't have or, or, or didn't believe in, and making new friends and choosing friends and interacting with people who share the same common goals that I had that, that aligned with the new lifestyle that I was living, I then started reaching out to people in the community to assist me with my rehabilitation and my change. So one of the places that I reached out to was Exodus um, Transitional Community. And, and when I reached out to Exodus, they wrote back and, and told me that, you know, they would have sent me into, my pro, into their program uh, once I'm released. So at my first parole board, I didn't make it. Um, I was basically held for 24 months. Then at my second one, I was also held for 15 months. And then on my third one, I reached out to Exodus again. I told them, this is my third parole board. Can you please forward me a letter saying that um, you will um, assist me in reintegrating back into the community once I'm released? And they did that. So at my, at my third parole board hearing, um, the commissioner who was interviewing me was Joseph Pre-Krangle. Pre he was the, the, the lead commissioner at that interview. And after introducing himself and my introducing myself, you know, he asked me what my plans were. So I told him that one of my plans were to participate in Exodus to, to, to help me readjust back in, into society and other things, you know, as far as um, employment and, and education was concerned. But I told him that I, I would be participating, you know, in Exodus once released. So he released me. So once I was released on July 24 of 2018, the very next day I, I, I came to Exodus and I was welcomed with the greatest hospitality that anyone could ever want once they're released in, in, into the community. So they asked me if I, you know, if I wanted something to eat or, you know, if I had a place to stay and, and I told them yes. And, um, Immediately, I was enrolled into um, walk, walking through the wilderness program. After grad, after, after walking through the wilderness program, I, I, I learned a lot of things that would help me um, reintegrate back into society successfully. But I needed more. So afterwards, um, I was offered by the vice president of, of the wellness program. That's an anger management and, and, and substance abuse uh, program that a workshop was um, beginning for people who did a lot of time in prison. The name of the program was Impact, and that they thought that it was a good fit for me. And once I started participating in Impact, I realized how unprepared I was for the real world. Um, the, the thing that, that, that really had the greatest impact on me when I when I started participating in in fact was that you know I, I realized how complacent my mind had become from being incarcerated so many years and the the person who um, was teaching the the impact program Mr. Darrell Bennett he um he got us to start focusing on what is it that we really wanted to do in life and get out of that mindset of locking ourselves in a box and, and thinking out of the box and really pushing us to the point because it's a really intense program pushing us to the point where we're thinking every day, we're writing every day, we're learning new things every day and we're reshifting and reinventing ourselves in a way that prison could never teach us. We're actually using our minds in a way that we were, we were not accustomed to in, in, in prison. And 
we, we learned things about acing interviews, preparing yourself for job interviews, how to fill out job applications completely and effectively, or resume writing, upgrading your resume and perfecting it every day, and uh, getting involved in educational programs to really en enhance your abilities and, and, and skills and, and, and what you know, your skill ability really might, you know, or, or, or need to need to get enhanced in. And well, my hope is, is, is that after the impact program is, is number one, to be gainfully employed, but also to be able to contribute to the community in a very meaningful, purposeful, and clear way. So um, my name is Dennis LeBron, and um, I'm originally from, from the Bronx. And uh, I actually, uh, I am a, a, a kid of, uh, excuse me, I'm a young man of six. You know, I guess I was like, I'm always, I was always helpful, you know, like as a kid, trying to help people out, trying to help my parents out. You know, I always had my hands in certain things, and uh, it wasn't really, I mean, I had my fun days and why not, you know, schooling, et cetera. But um, it wasn't that much exciting. I mean, you know, um, my household was actually Spanish speaking. Um, this is where I learned to be bilingual. So only in the household we learned to just, you know, like speak Spanish. And um, uh, one thing that she did is that she told me that, uh, in order for me to be responsible, she brought me a dog. And she told me, here's the dog, and this is how you're gonna know how to be responsible. So from there on, um, you know, I started taking care of the little puppies, the puppies started getting big. But and then um, one day, coming home from school, the puppy was gone. But I just tell you that, uh, you know, she had bad asthma, you know, so the puppy had to go. But in life, it just means that, you know, you're gonna run into disappointment. But that doesn't mean that you give up, you know? You don't give up. That's the whole point about it, you know, being responsible and learning what disappointment is all about. So anyway, growing up, uh, junior high school years, you know, I worked at a, a, a senior um, citizen home. I did that every summer, you know? Um, kind of enjoyed it, I liked it, it was fun. Then going up to high school, first job was in Burger King. It was pretty cool because I have an aunt um, named um, Carmen, and she was showing me how to budget my money. And when I first got my paycheck, she kind of like, you know, here's, you know, I showed her my check, like, wow, look, first paycheck. She's like, what is, how does it feel to actually have a real job? And I'm probably like, what the hell? So she took a picture, had to check on my chest, look. <laughs> but um, she showed me how to you know, manage my money, so I had to just continue um, spending it like that. But um, I just want to say that, um, when I found Exodus, um, you know, they help um, people, you know, reintegrate to society. And um, they, they, they're, they're, they're more like a family because you could come in here and you could be yourself. You don't have to be afraid. You know, they're here to, uh, you know, to actually um, help you literally to, you know, um, move forward. And, uh, you know, um, help you with, you know, jobs, et cetera, um, public assistance if you need it, you know, things like that. Um, but they, then they came this um, program, Impact, and Impact is about uh, allowing, uh, uh, actually giving you the tools to um, know what is it that you want, you know, out of life. Not only out of life, but to set a career goal. So what is your career goal? And my career goal, you know, is, well, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to college right now to be a social worker, but my, my passion is, you know, training dogs. You know, um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm a um, certified animal caretaker. So I always, my, you know, know um, taking care of dogs is my passion. That's what I love to do. So, um, uh, Impact had just um, showed me 
um, allowed me to actually see what my passion is. Because at the point, um, I didn't know what I wanted. I wanted so much, I was everywhere. My, 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 my life was like scattered, you know. I want to do this, I want to be a social worker. I want to do clerical jobs. But my main point is, is what I really want. What I really want is to train dogs, to care for dogs. So therefore, um, you know, knowing their the behavior, it kind of like coincide with, you know, dealing with people and their behavior, you know what I'm saying? So I could use my tool, the tools that I have of caring for a dog and showing them how to be well-mannered and, you know, teach them 93 commands. I mean, that's like, that's big, you know, and it's not just only like teaching these dogs how to sit down, stand, etc. You know, so teaching, teaching these dogs um, to be well-mannered, well-behaved, so they won't like, you know, destroy your little valuable things and why not, you know, they can, and I figured, you know, as I'm going to college, you know, to be a social worker, I feel that, you know, I'm working my way towards being a social worker so I can deal with um, people's behavior. So basically, I'm going to do both things. So how does impact help you? Well, impact became a family. You know, out of the six guys that we have, you know, every, you know, each and every one of us have our, you know, yes, you know, we kind of like struggle and trying to know what our strong point, weak point, and being able to have a person like you, Mr. Darrell, to teach the classes, kind of like actually, you know, open our eyes and, 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 and our broad thinking to what we actually want in life. So you actually, so impact, what impact has done for me is brought out, out of me, what I want in life. You know, so that's what pushed me to, you know, um, just further my education and just go for what I believe, for what I really love. All right, James Williams. Um... Uh, James Williams, um, just formally released um, from being incarcerated, um, did 30 years, and during the 30 years I have acquired my master's degree in theology, my bachelor's in behavioral science, and associate's, associate's degree in um, business management. <clears throat> While inside, you know, um, under these degrees, I was able to teach um, behavioral science, um, anger management, and I was able to teach um, substance abuse program. The same work that I was doing in prison, um, I realized that I wanted to do when I came home, I was released from prison. So I prepared myself while in there. Um, when I returned to society, being that I had geared my mind into thinking then what I wanted to do when I came out. It wasn't so much of a leap that I had seen other, other individuals struggle with. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I did, or a couple of the things that I did was contact Julio Medina because he was one of my professors in school. And he always gave me, um, you know, life challenges when I was, you know, um, in prison, and the life challenges he gave me was that you couldn't get them in books or someone couldn't teach them to you, you had to experience it. So upon my release, I came um, to see him and he, ought, and he put me in these classes, um, which is the road that I wanted to take. One of the classes that he put me in was to become a credible messenger. So I took that course, um, then he sent me on a retreat with another course with the same line of Credible Messenger. And I finished that course. And upon those two courses, um, he employed me to become a youth mentor. Impact has gave me the know-how of how to extract these 
um, resources and put them in a place where they need to be applicable. A lot of times these resources um, sit down somewhere and collect dust and they not helping the people that they are intended to help. Um, again, um, what, I ha what I have learned at Impact was to pinpoint, you know, my passion, um, don't spread it all around, um, get what I need to get, how I need to get it, and then get it out, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But um, it's been a pleasure, you know, um, having this class, and I thank the Exodus Transitional Community for their support, you know, in my being released and my continued, you know, endeavor on the passion that, you know, I'm on the road for. Uh, my name is James Johnson. I was born in New York City, in this section of New York City, which is Harlem. Uh, I moved out of Harlem at, a, I think I was about nine years old, moved downtown to a good neighborhood. I grew up in, uh, right above Midtown, 62nd Street, West End Avenue. I had a pretty decent uh, childhood, with the exception of being the oldest, meant more responsibilities that I didn't want. So I chose to run to the streets to get away from the responsibilities. One thing led into another, and I just became a, ch a problem child. Uh, I just came home August 9th, 2018, after doing 15 and a half years in prison for a robbery in the first degree. Uh, Again, I've had a good upbringing, and I can't blame no one else other than myself in my decision making. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is this here, that uh, although I was in the streets and I did things, I was always helpful to people. That was, that was one of my gifts, being able to communicate with people. But to move forward, uh, after being arrested on March 12, 2003, I realized that something had to change in my life. And I chose at that point in time to do something that would be beneficial not only to myself and my family, but the community also. Uh, I started getting into all type of programs voluntarily, but for the most part, I, I stood in the law library all the time, fighting against my case. Unfortunately, I wound up having to serve out all the time and everything. Uh, from there, I uh, again got out August 9th, 2018. I was mandated by parole to get into a drug treatment program and an alternative violence program, which was part of the stipulations. I had no intentions of coming to Exodus or any other program for that matter. I feel that I'd done my time and that should be it. However, it was a good thing and the parole officer wanted me to do this here. The reason why is because I'm one of those individuals, I'm 57 years old and I think I know everything, only to find out that I didn't know anything at all. The information that was provided by Mr. Darrell Bennett, who was our facilitator, enhanced my vision so much so that I thank him every single day for being in this class. It, it was a blessing. I mean, that's all I could say, it, it, it was a blessing. I mean, the information that was provided, the people that we have actually been able to encounter, uh, Secretary of State in New York, 
a senator, uh, assemblyman, uh, district attorney's office, uh, countless people throughout the state system. You know, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's been a magical ride for me. I must say. I will take this with me for the rest of my life. And upon my graduation in December, because I have four more, four more weeks left, I plan on doing a lot of voluntary work here. Because when I walked in the door, it was open arms. And it's been like that ever since. I've never seen this program turn anyone down. I don't care what you need, whether it's clothing, whether it's food, whether it's uh, assistance or, or anything. These guys have been here. Another thing that I, I, I see is that majority of the people here has been through the incarceration themselves. So they understand and know what it is. I've been around the block. I've done two bids myself. I did a violation. So I was released three different times. And there's no program that provides you with the necessary tools that you need to be successful in life than Exodus. And that's the honest to God truth. I'm not sitting, sitting here saying this because I'm sitting before a camera. One thing I don't do is lie. <laughs> and I'm being honest. I'm being honest about this. Uh, it's been a blessing. There's nothing else that I really can say. What makes Daryl a good leader because he's persistent. He knows how to lead. He knows how to teach. It takes a special talent to be able to do that there. And he has all those qualities. I've said in the first week when I met Julio, well, he came and gave us a brief uh, description of how he came about. And I made a statement at that time that there could be enough. He, 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 he couldn't have picked a better person to do because he stayed on top of us and he had us focused. Again, I'm one of those type of people because I've been around the block, I know what I know, and no one can change my mind. But this is someone who stood up to me, battled with me, and got me focused. Made me more direct. And that's what I love about him. And I tell him that every single day. He does. I appreciate that. <laughs> my name is Francis Abankwa. I have almost about 20 years experience as a truck driver and a bus operator in New York City. I started driving as a truck driver 1999. And uh, in between 1999, I became a driver trainer. Also, I speak four different languages by being in almost six different countries. I'm a very, and I speak four different languages fluently. Which oh, is, let me stop you right there. You did, what you just gave me yes. was great for energy. So I'm glad you picked that up. This right here, we more just interested in you as a person. So that's good though. What you just said, interview, perfect. But for here, just talk to us a little bit about yourself. Like, you know where you're from. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, this is a little bit. This isn't oh, for. Oh, okay, okay. Got you. Thank you. This is. Yep. Pretend like we're on CNN. Oh, okay. We're okay. not on the job. All right, all right. All right. So I'll be. Uh, who's the CNN guy? <laughs> I was going to say Lester Hall. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thank you. Good friends. Yes, I'm good. I'm good. All right, go ahead. Okay. My name is Francis Abankwa, born and raised in Ghana. I come from. Uh, a small village called uh, Achinakurum, which is near the city. The name of the city in Ghana is Kumasi. I'm from the Ashanti tribe, and I speak Ashanti. Uh, I came here in New York City, 1991. But first, I, I was in Ghana. I moved to Nigeria, where I went to school. From Nigeria, uh, I went to Germany to become a, what is called an orthopedic. And from there, uh, that didn't work out so good, so I came to United States. When I, be, when I came to United States, 1991, I drove a truck. I became a truck driver. 
And then from there, I became a driver trainer. And uh, I drove a bus also 2006 to 2014, I became a, a bus operator in New York City. From there, I got myself in trouble and I got incarcerated. I was incarcerated for about four years. When I came out this year, thank God I came to uh, see my probation officer. And to see my probation officer, there's a lady called Miss Tracy who introduced me that I should seek a help. So he introduced me to come to Exodus. And uh, thinking about Exodus, I thought it's a place where it's a job seeking place. But uh, when I came, they put me into a program called the Wilderness. And uh, I participate in the Wilderness, which is very good. It opened my eyes to know what is around me and also what I have to be. And from there, I was introduced to the vice president, who is Miss Diana, in Exodus, to come to Impact Program. To the Impact Program, when I came to Impact, I thought I know more about myself, what I want to do, how I want to do it. But the Impact also took me into another level. That uh, the professor that we have who is so brilliant, talented, and he is very smart to teach me beyond my reach because he saw inside me that I'm focused on what I can say is, is a narrow path. I was in the narrow path, but he taught me beyond my reach what I have to focus on because my focus was to become a bus driver or a truck driver, not knowing that I am more better than that. And I can reach more better goals than driving or becoming a truck driver. So when I came to Impact, the Impact has built me to be confident in me knowing that I can be better for what I was thinking about before. Now I can stand up and say, I have the knowledge to open my own company, knowing that I know my strength, I know my passion, and I also know my skills. Because the impact has taught me about my passion, about my skills, what is my skills, what is my passion, what do I do with my skills, what do I do with my passion, and what do I do with my talent, which is so confident that I know how I can use my soft skills and my hard skills, which impact has taught me. So when I'm going for my soft skills, I know when I get the students or when I create a job, I know my communication skills can help my employers. And also how to, I mean, form a group of people that I can also help because it's not about me, it's about reaching out to people. Thank you. I'm Elijah Estrada. I'm 24 years old. Um, and the Impact Program is a part of my success story. Um, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> um, how, how, did you, how did you meet Daryl? How did I meet Daryl? Funny story. Uh, so, you know, unlike everybody, unlike all of my Exodus brothers, um, Impact brothers, um, I've never been incarcerated. I met Daryl. Um, I, was, I was being, just having one of my ambitious moments. I walked into the New York Times building, determined to get a job. Uh, the security denied me. Um, I waited until one security guard left. I knew his shift was going, and I met another security guard, and he said, 
I like you. You're very ambitious. Let me refer you to somebody. And his name was Daryl, and I gave him a call, and Daryl was like, hey, you know, um, if you're looking for a job, I can recommend you to uh, an agency or, you know, Pacific people. And I let Daryl know right there on the phone to be clear. I said, no, I don't want to work for, I could get a job. I want to work for you. You know, I was told you're a Harvard lawyer, you know, and I'm having a child in about a few months and I need to get my life on track. And, you know, my father always told me, if you want to be successful, follow success. Follow people who already did it. And I knew Daryl had the blueprint and I just became his apprentice. And Daryl was starting up on a, he was starting up a program he told me about called Impact three days after I met him in person. And I was like, okay, sounds a little different. Um, but I know I could relate to it because my father did 17 years. And when he came home, he needed Impact. And I seen how much it was affecting him. You know, he was stressed, you know, depressed. You know, he didn't have the tools to, to do good, to do great. He still did excel, but he needed a, a program like Impact. So just being around this environment, it just showed me five, six other people from all different backgrounds, all the same story. They were in need of Impact. And I looked at it like a, 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 one of the most valuable le life lessons because, wow. These people come from different backgrounds, but they all share the same thing. We're all motivated trying to get to the next level. And Daryl was implementing those life skills on us every day, giving us challenging courses. What's your passion? What's your skill? What's your strengths? And it's all going to correlate to your purpose. What are some of the things you've learned uh, while in the program? Oh, wow. And Most important things I learned was how to find my purpose. Before I came into Impact, I was, you know, I would go through days, I would just wake up depressed because I've been praying about finding purpose and finding what it is that we were sent here on earth to do. Because God sent us all here for a purpose. And it, it was just depressing not to know what it is. What is my purpose? You know, what was I sent here on earth to do? And first week, I'll never forget it, um, Daryl started this assignment called Find Your Purpose. And it was a, it was a diagram, a compare and contrast diagram, skills, strengths, uh, passion, and how in the middle is the purpose. And I challenge everybody I speak to in my circle, my family, my friends about it. Because if you ask people your skills, your strengths, and your passion to this day, they still don't know. 30, 40 years on earth, and they, and they don't know. And that's in the Bible. God says life without purpose, you're just a wanderer on earth. So I took that very deeply and very seriously. And from that moment, maybe the second, third day, I knew impact was going to change my life sincerely. Um, a big thanks to Julio Medina for starting the program from Diana, Nora, Kathleen, the Vice Presidents, to Daryl, who, uh, you know, made it, they, they made an exception for me. You know, I wasn't, I didn't fit into the impact quota. You know, I wasn't incarcerated, but they made an exception for me, and my heart goes out to them. Um, and what are, what are um, some of the ways people can support the program? Oh, um, one of the easiest ways is just, Word of mouth, you know, speaking highly of them, um, showing people, letting people know who had history with the justice system. Listen, there is change. Listen, there's really people that care about you. And here at Exodus, my first day in the door, they ask people, are you, are you hungry? Do you need somewhere to stay? Do you need a suit? Do you, this entire suit is from Exodus. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not gonna just go into any other organization and think these people are gonna care to you on that level. It's just not happening. It's not happening. I was fortunate enough to meet the Senate, the, uh, the Secretary of State, Rosanna, due to, through, through Exodus, through Impact. This is not a regular thing. This is something that you can bounce back from, that you can come back swinging. Absolutely.